Dear Prime Minister, millions of children, particularly those from the poorest communities worst hit by the pandemic, are missing out on the opportunities to discover the life-changing magic of reading, one that the OECD researchers suggest is a key indicator of a child's future success. How can a child become a reader for pleasure if their parents or carers can't afford books and their primary school has no library or that library is woefully insufficient? It's just not possible. So I am writing with the support of former laureates, literature organisations and publishing industry leaders to ask the government to help reverse the spiralling inequality in education by putting primary school libraries at the heart of our long term response to the pandemic with a ring-fenced yearly investment of £100 million. The government has committed to levelling up this country and so I know will be interested in this way of creating a fair playing field for all children. The Education Secretary, Gavin Williamson, has acknowledged that we should look beyond the recovery support package to do this and I know that you yourself have said how much you care about the literacy um, uh, of children in this country and the devastating impact on the most disadvantaged school children is not going to be remedied with a quick fix. We must properly invest in their future at this pivotal moment. Decades of research show that a reader of her pleasure is more likely to be happier, healthier, to do better at school and to vote all irrespective of background. And according to the OECD, Reading for pleasure is a bigger indicator of a child's educational success than their parents' socioeconomic status. Ofsted has recognised the vital role that reading for pleasure plays in improving literacy levels. School libraries are an essential tool. In 2019, the National Literary Trust and Nottingham Trent University found that children using their school library were more likely to read for pleasure and have better reading and writing attitudes. This difference was especially marked for those eligible for free school meals. Since 2013, the PE and sport premium allocated directly to primary schools and ring fence to improve physical education has helped, in, helped ensure that all young people can experience the numerous benefits of physical activity. Surely the opportunity to become a reading for pleasure is just as important. How is it fair that some children are being given this immeasurable advantage, but stark book poverty means that many more are denied this same chance to design, to change their future? I have visited primary schools across this country uh, over my 20 year career as a children's book author and illustrator. And it's heartbreaking to see just how unevenly this fundamental opportunity is distributed. So often the children who read, need books the most are in schools that cannot provide them with even an adequate school library, let alone a good one. There's vast inequality in the current primary school pro library provision. In 2019, the Great School Libraries report found that a lack of space, resource and expertise and that libraries are deteriorating. And whilst every prison has a statutory library, one in eight primary, school ha primary schools has no library space at all. And worse st still, schools with a higher proportion of children on free school meals were more than twice as likely not to have access to a designated library space. And these children from the poorest communities will be the most impacted with reports such as those from the Sutton Trust warning that they're set to fall further behind. It is these children and their families whose voices are not always heard. And I'm using my platform as Waterston's Children's Laureate to speak out on their behalf. This is not something that can wait. We must act now. I know that the government is looking for practical solutions for the problems caused by the pandemic and placing primary school libraries at the heart of our long term education recovery would change lives and help to level up this country. By supporting primary school libraries with a yearly dedicated boost of £100 million, we can help children whose future now lies in the balance. Over time, £100 million a year would enable every primary school in England to invest in the key areas of library excellence, books, expertise and space that their pupils so urgently need. For example, 
A boost of 28 million could enable the one in eight primary schools without a library to develop space, buy stock, develop expertise and access to school library services. 75 million pounds per year would employ a part-time expert librarian and 60 million pounds per year allow schools to purchase one new book a year for each child. Teachers, librarians, parents and MP MPs have been working tirelessly to mitigate the huge problems caused by the pandemic. For my own part, I am launching the life-changing libraries projects, not only to draw attention to the consequences of in immense unfairness in primary school library provision, but also to showcase the transformative impact a well-resourced library has on a child's life opportunities. The gap in educational in attainment and opportunity remains stark and worrying and urgent. I urge you to take this positive step to invest in our children and our country's future. Put simply, libraries change lives. Literacy changes lives. I look forward to hearing from you and would be pleased to discuss this call for support. Yours sincerely, Cressler Cow. Children's Laureate.